This presentation is for Concordia's course FPR6010-V16 for Jeff Castell, Jacqueline King, and Matt Cole. It summarizes the Dick and Carey Systems Approach Instructional Design Model. As you can see from this graph that represents the design model, you can start from different spots of the design process and this is what makes this model unique. So long as the preceding steps have been met, you can start at any any of these specific design elements and proceed to the next spot. The next slides guide us through step by step the design model. Step one is identify instructional goals. Another way to say this is begin with the end in mind. It's important in this step to think what you want your learners to be able to do once they have completed the instruction. Step two is to conduct instructional analysis or to analyze the instructional goal, which provides a step-by-step -step determination of what people are doing when they perform the goal and consequently what entry behaviors are needed. Step three is therefore an extension of step two and it's important that the instructor identify what the student needs to know before they begin the process and what specific learner characteristics they may be encountering when going through the instructional design process. Step four is to write the performance objectives and it's important that the instructor identifies the specific behavior skills to be learned and the conditions under which those skills must be performed in order to prove that the criteria have been met. Step five is then an extension of step four. In step five, the instructor must develop the test to satisfy the objectives named in step four. Based on the test created in step five, step six is to develop the instructional strategy. Identifying specifically a strategy to achieve the end goals by emphasizing presentation of information, practice and feedback, and testing. Once the strategy of step six has been developed, then the instructor must develop the accompanying instructional materials to guide them through the process. Step eight combines the development and implementation of formative evaluations to help guide instruction throughout the process. And in step nine, there's the development and implementation of summative evaluations to identify if the students did indeed learn the targeted behaviors. Finally, here's a reference sheet from which we pulled all of our information. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Have a good day.